Today, we're going to talk about the God who breaks through. This is one of his natures in 2 Samuel 5. You know, David defeats the Philistine army there and has the greatest moment of breakthrough he's ever had. So it says, my God makes your gods who are giants look small, like they're puny. So my God's the bell pairs and the God who breaks through. Now I say this to you because we were in a season in 2006 where we moved to Los Angeles with virtually no money. 2007, the recession hits. The writer's strike hits. We have a church with most entertainment people. We have zero dollars. Zero dollars was a hard time to live in LA or move to LA. And many of our people also moved to LA or were just in transition. And during that time, a woman moved from uh, London, England. Her name was Liz uh, Jones at the time, and Liz Wright. And those of you might have heard of her. She's an incredible station herself on YouTube. I encourage you to go visit it. And Liz, she's just a, a bright human, just a wonderful human. She came to pray for us as a community that we would experience all that God had for us. And she felt like a prayer assignment. So she came and prayed for, and she'd been praying for a few months with a, a friend of ours who's a United Nations worker who never had like these deep God encounters that Liz had. And they've been praying together pretty much every morning. And one of the mornings, uh, Liz was about to leave the apartment where the other woman lived. And she uh, opened the door and all of a sudden the door swung wide open. And the other woman was knocked back. And Liz was also knocked back. And she saw and heard something. The other woman didn't see and hear it, but she felt something for her first time in this way. And Liz heard, welcome the angel of breakthrough. Now, she had never heard of this before. It's not like something in the Bible that you can see there's an angel of breakthrough. But it was a context of... There's different angels who have different assignments, and she knew that this angel had an assignment, just like industries receive breakthrough, entertainment industry receives breakthrough, scientific breakthroughs, you know, educational breakthroughs, people have breakthrough performance, breakout experiences, these kinds of things, that this angel was coming to bring another level of something. She said, why is this angel here, Jesus? And he said, because the community you're involved with is going to experience a significant breakthrough because my purpose is at hand. It's time for my purpose to be unfold, unveiled or unfolded. Now, she called me after she had a long experience and she had some details and she had some instructions. She called me and left a message on my phone. And I saw it was her and, she's, and she ended up texting and saying, please call me back as soon as possible. I've had the encounter that I moved here for and it's for you. And I have to be honest, the place in my heart, because we had so much discouraging news and the encouraging news wasn't super encouraging, that my heart was a little jaded and I wasn't as alert as I would have liked to have said I was or would be in this kind of situation. If someone who I trusted said I had an encounter with God for you, I actually was kind of like, okay, I'll call her at some point. And I almost put it off to the next day. And I felt really convicted, like, Sean, you've invited her. She's come here to pray for your community. She's had an encounter. Listen. I remember calling her and she said, you know, I've, I've had this encounter with this angel of breakthrough. And I remember my first response was, I don't really believe you. It didn't hit home. It didn't hit deep. And she started telling me the encounter. And the more she told, the more my spiritual senses and my faith realm was awakening. I felt like part of myself, I was in a dull place. So I'm, I'm sad to say I was in that place. I was in full on ministry activity, full on place. And I'm like, if it was a worship time, my heart would have come alive. But when it came to hearing revelation or even reading the Bible at the time, things were dry. And so I had to actually will myself into a place of saying, God, thank you so much for bringing this. I'm choosing to be in full faith, even though I don't feel it. And even though I feel the opposite. And so I'm listening to her. She said, Sean, God is going to come and bring breakthrough to our community. And he's going to come for the least of these and for the greatest of these to bring financial breakthrough and housing placement and deliverance of debt. Now, because it was during the recession time, many people had lost a lot. I, including myself, I had lost uh, a lot of my net worth and I, I was in a house or I uh, had owned a house still in a Southern state that I still had a lot of money out on it. Like, I mean, $80,000 or more out on it. And I was at that point worth zero. Like all my, all my money was gone. I'm still making good money. But I wasn't accumulating at all because of all the debt that I had accrued from moving to Los Angeles in a, in a time. You know, oh, it's just recessions. So and you can relate to those stories. And all the people in our church, and we had probably 25% of our church was couch surfing. They had to move out of their apartments because of finances. They were living three or four in one-bedroom apartments. We had you know whole families living in two-bedroom apartments. It was just a really hard time. And the people who did have anything, any resource, they were sharing with everybody else. And so they were even dry. They were even depleted. And we, because we had that many people who, you know, didn't have housing, I remember at one point there was a, a couple of homeless people in our community that we had drawn from the streets. And one particular homeless man was named Wayne. And Wayne would uh, sit outside in a cafe that we, we had that was part of the, the building we operated on Tuesday nights. And he would do apologetics to convince everybody who was going in why we weren't from God and why this ministry was not God. But he went there because he got free food and he got time with people and he just really liked these young people and 
and he liked Hollywood and he liked the entertainment industry, so he would come, but he would try and convince everybody, you know, but he would listen because the doors would stay open at the cafe. So he'd listen to messages from time to time and people would come out, sometimes they'd have a healing testimony and they'd share with Wayne that he didn't believe in healing, he, didn't, he was cessationist, and, but he would stay for whatever reason he stayed. So during this month, at the beginning of the month, Liz got up and shared on a Tuesday night and said, this is the encounter I had, and this is what I believe we're supposed to have in our expectation of faith. Then I shared how it was hard to engage my faith because of disappointment. So I shared my process in it, and I said, you know, uh, you guys, if you're like me and you're jaded or cynical at all, or if there's just a you know, lack of sensitivity to your faith realm, I want you to just lay that at the altar and just do a will exchange with God. We take on his nature for what isn't the lack of your nature, just you know, exchange that. And so we did that. And during that month, we had the most unbelievable reports. But my report came the very next day when some friends of mine called up and said, the house that you own, we are taking it over and we're taking all the debt out. You don't need to be in LA with debt. We're paying it all. And I said, you guys can't do that. They weren't people of great, great wealth, but they did have finances, but they were in recession as well. I said, don't take on my, and it was a false responsibility, the pain of my debt. Let me, let me experience that. Let me go through that. That's between me and Jesus. And they said, no, God has told us to do this and we're supposed to take on this debt. I, I just, I couldn't be like, look what the Lord has done. I mean, I was at a place where I was like, no, don't do this. Debt. I feel bad for you. And they said, Sean, release it to us. And I realized that my, the words out of Liz Jones' mouth or Liz right now, her mouth were, God is bringing breakthrough. And he, and, and she prophesied it would come immediately. And the next day it came to me. And not only did it come, but the people who brought breakthrough to me, they made more money in that month uh, in their store that their tithe would have been the same amount of money as they gave me. They never had that happen before. And it was usually the most dead month of their retail stores. So it just shows you that not only was there breakthrough for me, but there's breakthrough for the people bringing breakthrough, which is how God works. He multiplies it to the people you know who bring it. Well, during that month, just in one month, by the end of March, every single person in our church who needed a house got a house. Well, Wayne kept hearing the stories, the homeless guy in the cafeteria kept hearing the stories in the cafe kept hearing him over and over and over. And he just didn't believe these stories. He's like, you guys are psyching yourselves out. You're just, you're putting, you know, you're, you're over spiritualizing these normal occurrences of people getting housing. But pretty soon one night I, I had everyone raise their hand who needed, who had needed breakthrough for housing, who got it. And it was everybody who needed it, got it. So is there anybody who still needs a house? No one needed a house. No one needed space. Everybody was in permanent housing or in a place that was, you know, they knew it was God for them. And Wayne heard that and he got really, sad but also excited because he was homeless and he was living with some people in a like a really shady hotel a bunch of them rented a room together and they would go panhandle during the day and so he was homeless and he said god if you really are god of breakthrough and you really are the god of these young people and if i'm misled at all about my theology about who you are jesus could you reveal yourself and get me a home too right then a woman who worked in social work walked by him and she goes wayne she'd met him a couple times she said wayne i just got here late to the meeting because I got a new position over housing for people who are struggling with housing issues in, in LA. And I remember you told me a little bit about you and I think you're qualified because of your disability because you walked with a walker, you had some, some physical problems. I think you're qualified for this house. And basically she looked into the house for him and, with, and it was right after he prayed that within 24 hours, he was in the house with his own bathroom, which was his heart's desire, with his own space in the kitchen, with, it was right outside, the, the bus was literally met at the end of their driveway. That's where the, the public bus station was, so that he could go to the bus really easily and get around the city. Everything that was like his list in his heart that he had never articulated to God, but he would have wanted if he did, was there. And he was so overwhelmed by this that he came up and told us the next Tuesday, I even got a house and I didn't believe in this. God broke through for me too. And it was so profound as so we had him come up and share because everyone knew him as the anti-us and the one who's always trying to rebuke us and tell us what we were doing wrong. And all of a sudden he's like, I had breakthrough too, you guys. I didn't even believe in this. Well, that particular Wednesday, the next day, he went home on a bus uh, from somewhere and his walker literally fell apart at, as he got off the bus and he looked at his door of his house and he said, God of those young people, Jesus, I always thought I knew you, but I didn't know you until now. Would you do something? They believe in healing. Would you do something for me? Because I need a breakthrough in my body. If I'm even going to make it from here to the house, otherwise you're going to have to send an emergency, emergency you know, ambulance for me. And I, I just think that would be a lot of work for a lot of people. Would you just heal me? And he just prayed and he heard the Lord inside. He didn't know if it was the Lord or not at first, but he heard a voice say, take a step. And he couldn't even barely balance. And he had his part of his walker and he took a step 
another voice of taking another step and he took another and then another and pretty soon he had confidence in the steps and pretty soon he was walking normal to his door and he had breakthrough so he came back and we had so many people had these most incredible stories of deliverance of dead and breakthrough and all these things now why would god bring breakthrough that way especially for resources and finances Number one, we were aligning ourselves with our assignment and God together in unity as a community. And we've had the fruit of that kind of breakthrough ever since. I love what happens when you're in a Christian community called a church. You can get involved with the church. And if you're in a church that has faith and belief for each other, there's something that happens when we see each other after God's heart. And we apply that kind of faith to each other because we start to experience a supernatural byproduct as faith in an unusual way because your family believes in you and they're believing not in the report of what is, they're believing what could be. And that's what happened in the community. We start to believe in what if we were fully resourced? What if we all had jobs? I remember that month, within that month or month and a half, everyone who didn't have a job, even people who um, had been looking for jobs got jobs. I remember we had like 25 people in our church start working at different coffee shops. And a lot of them were actors. And they're like, I don't really want to work at a coffee shop. I'm just grateful because at the time, and this is no joke, over 250 to 2,000 applications were being submitted to just like Starbucks and Studio City and in Los Angeles and you know, in, in Hollywood, these kinds of areas, because the recession was that bad. So to get a job in one of these places that didn't need workers, but we're getting inundated with, with these kinds of resumes. And that's a phenomenal that our people were chosen over and over. And someone would ask, how come you chose me? And the person would say, I don't know, there's just something different about you. I just liked you, which is so God. That's how breakthrough works is he puts favor on us and we have a different result. Now me personally, I remember all of the trips I was taking, especially the international trips, People were so generous financially, which actually sustained their church because I was giving, we always gave it well above 20 to 30 percent of our income. But at the time, I was giving 60 percent of my income away, if not more, 75 percent to sustain the church and to help people, to do all kinds of helps in the church with with different families. And so we needed more money than we never needed before. And we were getting all kinds of like churches would say, we've never taken an offering this big and it's in a time of recession. And I was like, this is so generous of you guys. And you know, thank you so much. And I would bring it back to LA and we would help our little community of entrepreneurs and actors, entertainers, and people who are going after the poor. I was like, God, you're so good. He sustained us in a season when we needed the most breakthrough. We saw that part of the nature of God so beautifully. And I just believe that that's who God is. When we're in the time of needing breakthrough, as a Christian, the beautiful thing is we have a God who's part of his nature is breakthrough. Many of you need health you know, breakthroughs or you need financial breakthroughs or purpose breakthroughs or family breakthroughs, relational stuff. The good thing about being a Christian is you can partner your faith to what God's will is in that situation. And he will manifest Ephesians 3.20 beyond what you could hope for or imagine. I've seen him do that over and over and over, especially in in real ways like finances and resources and health and these kinds of things. But to know God as a God who breaks through is profound. So part of doing these prophetic journey videos with you where it's about your prophetic journey is I want you to know God as in his different natures and in the supernatural and the ways that he wants to be revealed. And he is the God who breaks through. And I wrote this book about it. You guys can read it. It's a breakthrough prayers and prophecies and declarations that you can actually read a prophecy over 12 different areas of your life, family, resources, transition, warfare. Um, you can read uh, declarations of those areas. You can read prayers of those areas to give you a tool to actually do something with it. Because I, what I've realized is that people don't have a lot of scripture on this. And there's a lot of scripture on this or they don't have the right language. And if we can just provide language, it changes everything. I'm gonna encourage you, if you can get the book, if not, just read the scriptures on Breakthrough and ask God in areas that you need a different result, ask God to do it. Because I'm, I'm sitting here right in front of you as somebody who I wouldn't even be alive right now if it wasn't for the God who breaks through. I've had malaria seven times, I've had parasites, I've done chemotherapy. I've done all this stuff that God keeps healing me of over and over and over. So I'm alive in front of you right now because he had a willing agenda to keep me alive. And financially, I would have failed like three different times. You know, I just think of that. I'm an utter doomed failure, like to where it'd be hard to recover from. But God broke through. And it wasn't because stupidity or it wasn't because I was, you know, making bad decisions. It was because the whole industry has changed. But God broke through. And I watched friends who didn't have God and they didn't know how to partner their faith. And they're not even doing the same industry anymore. They're in a way different industry than what they had passion for because they didn't know Jesus. Well, because you know Jesus, because you're in a relationship to him, you get a different result in your life. You get a God result, not a human result. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you'll share it with somebody and subscribe to our channel because we have a lot more videos like this. Thanks for watching Your Prophetic Journey with me, Sean Bowles.